Well, the weather might not look like it, but we have a proper planting project to do today and I couldn't be happier about it. Hey everybody, Aaron from The Impatient Gardener here and I'm doing a lot of things in the vegetable garden today that probably could have been done a bit ago, but we have had such a cool spring. I know many of you have had the same thing. Um, I still could have probably gotten rid of this because we've had a cold spring, but not like a lot of freezing. So it probably would have been okay to do it, but basically it just bought me a little bit of extra time. So I'm not too far behind, but the things we're going to plant today, most importantly, the sweet peas are going out. Then we've got, um, onions, lettuce, kale, and peas. We got to get the peas out too. So that's what we're planting today. Um, now I have done a video, okay, many, many videos about planting sweet peas before. And because I love sweet peas and I love growing them. And I'm just so happy that, you know, over the years, I feel like I've really dialed in my method. And so it's really working. And the one thing that I keep learning about sweet peas is that they are really really tough these guys have been out in my what i call a greenhouse it's really a cold frame um, for s at least probably two weeks now they're fully hardened off during that time we've had a couple of uh, below 30 temperatures they don't even bat an eye at that now they're a little bit protected but they they haven't batted an eye at all so they'll be just fine going out now um, and I want to show you guys know that I always grow these in these root trainers. I wanted to show you the root growth on these. You can see that they're coming out the bottom of the pot there. I forget exactly the day I planted these, but they, they grow quickly. And let me just open this up so you can see what they look like. So that's what they look like inside of here. And the beauty of this is that you don't have to struggle to get them out. They just sort of lay there. But the nice thing with this is that even though these cells aren't wide, they are long. So the roots just keep going straight down. So sweet peas are pretty heavy feeders and I've prepared the soil now. Keep in mind that this soil is, I take really good care of the soil in these four beds in the vegetable garden, um, well all of them, but in particular these that I grow cut flowers in. So uh, they get homemade compost typically in fall. I sort of get all my compost in a big load towards fall. So I top off all these beds first. Um, then they get leaf mold or chopped up leaves that become leaf mold. Um, and then I also, to top up my beds, because I have a weird thing where I like all of the soil to be towards the top of my beds. I hate seeing um, soil it just sort of naturally um, compacts and I like the soil to be up to the top. So then I top off with Organics Mechanics planting mix, uh, which is great. It's primarily compost, but some other good stuff. And then I always put a little bit of biochar in, although I don't really need to do that anymore because biochar is a one and done solution. You only have to put it in once and it's there forever. Um, I couldn't remember if I did these beds, so I put a little bit of biochar in. I will not, someone remind me that I don't need to do it next year. I've also worked in some well-rotted horse manure that I picked up from a fellow gardener just in the area where these sweet peas are going to go and I think they will like that quite a bit. You can see there are some tulips coming up in this bed. Those are from previous years when I had tulips in here um, and I just sort of plant around them and if they come up they come up and they do usually. So there's really nothing to this and I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you this but I just have them go straight down any any sort of work that's involved in planting sweet peas is really just about preparing the soil properly before you plant them. Each one of these cells has one sweet pea in it. I guess some I guess there's a handful of them that have two. And I think I will plant a few doubles on either side of this. Now these plants are short enough that they don't need to be tied in just quite yet, um, but off like this one could be. You do need to sort of tie your sweet peas in. I might use a little clip like this. You need to tie your sweet peas in just to get them going, unless you're going to have something like um, some little uh, mesh netting or something. So, but if you're growing them up like a pole like this, uh, then sometimes you need to sort of get them started in the right direction. And after they're about oh, I don't know, 18 inches, two feet tall, they sort of become self-supporting. Little tip, when I write my label, I always write what color it's gonna be on there so that I don't have to go searching like on my phone for what the description of that one is because the names of these mean nothing to me by the time I get to that. 
So a couple of notes if you're planting sweet peas in the ground. First of all, protect them from rabbits. Rabbits love to nibble these off, so you have to be really careful. They can wipe out your sweet peas in about five minutes. And the second of all, protect them from slugs. And I should probably still protect these from slugs. Um, whatever slug protection method you use, um, in the past I've used an organic slug bait. That works pretty well. This year I'm also going to try out these wool slug pellets. Um, I'll put a link to those in the description. I haven't tried them yet, so um, I can't give you any feedback on They actually sell these as fertilizer, but I'm looking to use them as a slug barrier. So, um, but do protect, especially if you're in the ground. I mean, raised beds too, you need to do that. But obviously, if they're out in the open, uh, they're more susceptible to damage from whatever's going to come along to try to eat them. Before we move away from the uh, four flower beds, I've got some flowers to actually plant in there too that I'd sort of forgotten about. Some snapdragons, um, which had a real rough go of it. They got tossed around in a windstorm. The uh, temporary greenhouses that we put up decided to go for a bit of a spin and so they they had a rough go of it but they're still looking pretty good and uh, the straw flowers which actually I broadcast sowed in a tray and just never got around to even potting them individually but they keep growing okay so I think we're just gonna see how they fare out here they're pretty tough too so we'll manage them out here I don't ever plant in rows or anything when I'm doing flowers in these beds I just sort of toss it in Everything gets all mixed up and I think it's kind of pretty. I sort of like to do the snapdragons towards the edge because then they sort of tend to grow over the edge and uh, they don't have straight stems. And I think they're way more interesting when they don't have straight stems. Without a doubt, my favorite early season thing to grow and probably maybe one of my favorite things to go grow period in terms of vegetables is lettuce. I've got a couple of packs of lettuce left. This is actually the lettuce. You've now seen this lettuce and I think this is its third video. Uh, first I had it in the uh, bugs video with the aphids. Um, fortunately that problem has been solved. They're all better. Moving them out to my temporary greenhouse seemed to help a ton with that as well as I treated them with some insecticidal soap. Then I used some of these in the planter in the uh, urn and now some of them we're actually going to eat. So uh, I'm going to plant these and then I'm also going to plant some lettuce seeds as well so we get a little bit of a succession sowing here. So you might have noticed during some of the shots of the vegetable garden that these beds are really a mess uh, and that's partly because I still have all of the plants that I healed in here for the winter where I had to take out from other parts of the yard to have some septic work done. Um, those are still here because I haven't moved those yet. So it's really hard in my bed plan for where things are going to go in terms of vegetables has to change a little bit so that I can get some of these early season things in. Same thing in this bed, by the way. I've topped it off. I did not mix it in. I just topped it off with the uh, Organics Mechanics uh, Clanter Mix. Uh, and then a little bit of, um, actually this bed already had biochar, so I, I only added a little bit. And then also, if you see some of this, there's, you can see some white stuff on the surface. I actually planted or threw in just a sprinkling of 10-10-10 fertilizer. Um, I'm not big on fertilizer. You probably have noticed that over the years. That I don't use a lot of fertilizer and I don't uh, just broadcast fertilizer all over my garden because uh, most plants, I, I feel like a lot of plants don't need it. If you feed your soil, you don't need um, a lot of fertilizer, but you know, vegetables are different. And I think I've been maybe perhaps under fertilizing for a few years here. So um, I thought maybe that would, that would help. Now I'm gonna do a little row in the middle here of something like probably some cut and come again types honestly i love all these other lettuces but the ones that i go back to time and time again are the cut and come again ones okay i'm not fully sure what this is but i think this is sort of a cut and come again it's called uh, master chef blend and you know the deal with um, lettuce is that they need light to germinate so what you want to do 
is just, in fact, I'm gonna um, moisten the soil first. Now we're just gonna do a little sprinkle right down the middle of these two. Because it's so windy today, I'm just gonna kind of press them into the soil because I don't want them blowing away on me. Next up is peas. Also, I love peas. Now I only grow bush type peas. I don't grow the peas that get super tall because I don't wanna to have to deal with um, that kind of trellising. So I always grow bush type peas. Now they still need some kind of support. It's still good to have something, but that can just be a few twigs or um, a few sort of, you can kind of create like a little wigwam with short bamboo stakes. It doesn't have to be something you know, huge. I always start with a little bit of soil inoculant. Um, that's really good for peas and beans. And I just make like a little row here. I, and you need a very small amount, but if you put it in the row, it just has to touch the peas when they're in there. I have two types of peas. One is Snack Hero from, which is an All-America Selection winner. These are leftovers from last year. I guess I'm planting them maybe three inches apart and about an inch deep. And I don't cover up that row until I plant the next one usually. And I plant the rows fairly close. Um, nice rich soil. You know, you don't have to follow the spacing rules in raised beds. You don't actually have to follow the spacing rules anytime you don't want, but a little inoculant. And then I'm going to do, for this one, this is Cascadia. So, you know, peas are really good to um, succession sow. So if I'm on my game, I will come back in, say, two weeks and plant maybe another two rows of these. Next up, I'm going to plant a little bit of kale. This is lacinato kale. It's the only kale I really like eating, so I don't really grow anything else, even though I think kale is beautiful and I love it for its ornamental qualities. In terms of stuff I'm growing in the vegetable garden, this is really the only one I like. So um, these I started from seed and actually they're looking really good. They'd be very happy to be out of these pots. Um, and I find that I can grow kale year round. I, I find that these plants, um, as long as I keep picking the leaves from it, these plants will last probably all the way through fall unless we have some sort of like cabbage worm issue or something. All right, in the ground they go, there's nothing to it, just popping them in. So it seems sort of fitting that one of the first projects I do in the garden, the vegetable garden this year, is be working in this bed because this was the last bed that I touched in fall. This is the garlic and onion bed this year. Um, I think we did a video where you guys saw uh, me planting up the garlic. And this is as far as the garlic is up here. Some are actually very small um, because that's where we've been so far this year. But I did reserve this whole side for onions. So I'm gonna do onions over here. Um, and then once this stuff comes out, I'll be able to plant something else in this bed after this is harvested, which is for me typically late July on the garlic and the onions. Sometimes I pick those. You, you can pick onions sort of whenever you want. Um, you don't necessarily have to wait until they're fully developed. What did I get this year for onions? Um, Patterson Hybrid. This is how I've started onions the past two years now. I do like growing onions from seed, um, but you have to start those in like January. and. It's just a lot of time invested in them when these grow pretty well too. So these are little onion, I, I guess they call these slips or onion starts or onion plants. Basically they're mini onions and uh, you just pop them in the ground. But what I'm doing this year is once again, I'm actually gonna fertilize. I got this, it's called onion food. It's jump start. So you plant it now. And also the garlic could actually really benefit from this. So I'm gonna broadcast some of this around the garlic too. My garlic has always grown well, but it doesn't get huge. And I think that's a fertilizing issue. Um, they really are hungry plants and they want some. And this year for the first time, or at least the first time since I can remember, I'm actually gonna give it to them. Uh, these are really simple to, to put in. You know, the thing with onions is the more room you give them, the bigger they will probably get. They want more room and more resources. I generally plant them fairly close because I don't need a two pound onion or a one pound onion. I just need, you know, a medium sized onion. So I'm gonna pop these in first 
And I'm just going to go here right through um, the leaf mulch. This is the leaf mulch that was on for the garlic last year. I'm just going to go right through that and pop it in. And I'm going to go about every, every four inches. Hey, did you guys notice that the raised beds look a little different? Um, I, I, we restained them last weekend. Um, so we had stained these beds originally this garden. We built this in 2018 and, uh, we stained the beds then, and we did not wait for the for the wood to cure or anything like that. You know how you're supposed to let, well, I didn't actually at the time, but you're supposed to let fresh wood sort of dry out before you go stick stain on it. And of course I had no patience for that. So we did not do that. I just stained it right away. They were starting to fade pretty badly, especially on the tops. So uh, we restained them again last week. And this time we rolled it on and I think that probably will help. Last time I actually used like a pump sprayer and sprayed it on and then used a brush to spread it. But they were definitely showing showing some signs of age and I think it looks I think it looks good. I used the same stain that I uh, used originally. It's from a company called uh, Timber Pro. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description for you in case you're interested. It's a non-toxic stain. They really market it towards um, like chicken coops and stuff like that. Um, but obviously it works at. Now, of course, it's not on the inside of these beds. So I don't know if, if you like need the non-toxic portion of that situation. Um, but as long as we're growing vegetables and there's an option for something like that, I thought, why wouldn't you just play it safe and use uh, something that you know is going to be a safe product to use. So the directions for this fertilizer say that you can make a furrow two inches away from everything or you can broadcast so or broadcast it I should say. So I'm going to make a furrow right between these two rows. I'm going to put some in there. but I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this fertilizer around. And you're supposed to sort of fork it in. I'm gonna use my fingers as my fork today. Well, I'm not gonna pretend that my first day in the garden was really a picnic because it's been miserable out here. I'm freezing, I am so ready to be done with this. But there's a great deal of satisfaction that comes with getting these jobs done that needed to be done and getting some things in the ground for vegetables. Uh, because so many times I get behind on that and then I miss out on it and everyone else is eating vegetables all their garden and mine are still poking away because I planted them late. I've still planted them a little bit late, but we're okay on that, I think. And I've moved some plants out of my basement and out of the greenhouses. So I've created a little bit more room and they are always happier when they get in the ground. That is for sure. So let me know in the comments where you're at with your garden stuff this year. If you feel like you're behind or you're more or less um, on the right track. Uh, I would say I feel like I'm always behind. I, my answer to that is always I am behind uh, because there's just so much to do in such a short period of time. And then what I would also tell you is that it always works out. By the time I hit like mid-June, I'm like, well, everything's going to get in or it's not going to get in, but it's we're moving on and we're enjoying summer. So hang in there if you're struggling a little bit. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful or interesting. If you did, uh, do me a favor, give it a like. It absolutely helps. And hang out and subscribe if you haven't because we're going to be watching those sweet peas bloom and you don't want to miss that. All right, have a great day in your garden and I hope your weather's better than mine. We'll see you soon. Bye.